I'm a traditional artist. I'm used to working with pencils. I've only done digital painting once before, but I've never done a portrait. I wanna try and learn as much as I can because I don't know very much and see if by the end of this video, I can create a really great looking portrait. Let's get into it. I've pretty much forgotten everything that I learned when I first tried out digital art. So let's try and test out a few things. I want to get a feel for these brushes again. And this will be really useful for sketching because I can do little lines and little dots. Oh yeah, so I just drew straight on the background layer. That's a beginner's mistake. Oh, there's also these brushes with slightly different effects. Oh, I quite like that. It has a very tapered look to it. What's this? Sumi tilt. Oh, that's kind of like chalk or pastels. Yeah, that could be good for a sort of textured look. Okay, I think I've tested enough pencils because there's so many. Okay, now I wanna play around with blending some colors. What if I have a green and then I sort of want it to go into a blue? How would I do that? Do I just slowly ease off the pressure? That seems to work. I think I've played around enough. I just wanna dive into a drawing now. Let's go for it. I'm gonna start by doing a quick sketch of a nose and I'm just using this photo as a reference. <laughs> I'm just gonna start to block in these base tones, not really worrying too much about getting this perfect. I'm definitely not used to working in this way. This kind of feels a bit weird. Okay, let's see if we can sort of feather these two values in together. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. Just gotta experiment. I found that I was having to repaint a lot of things, just going over areas again and again, but it was actually super fun. Nothing was permanent. I could easily change things. And so I didn't feel that pressure of things having to be perfect first time. And I also wanna add some white highlights and some texture to the skin. And I think that's it for this study. I'm already feeling a lot more confident just doing a few warm up sketches like this it can really help you get back into the flow of things before you start a big drawing. I wanna try and do a black and white study first. Color is something that's really complicated in itself. So I wanna just focus on actually getting to grips with the painting process, the brushes, the tools. So I made the photo quite low in opacity and just sort of sketched over the top to create my base sketch. Next, I just sort of filled the sketch with a mid-tone gray and I'm gonna start blocking in the base values on a new layer and just sort of blocking where the shadows are and the lighter tones and really get a feel for where the lights and darks are. I keep adding more and more shading to the point where the drawing gets so, so dark. You can barely see it right now. I've definitely got to fix this. I created a new layer. I started to add some more details and try and add in some highlights, lighten it up a bit. And this is definitely the most satisfying part of a portrait for me is adding in these little details. And I tried to add in some harder edges to add a bit more structure to this space so it wasn't so soft. Next, I wanted to bring a bit more texture to her skin. It was looking too smooth, so I tried out something called a pastel brush, and I tried to only use this sparingly just to make it a nice subtle texture, and I thought I had done that. I thought it was subtle until I brightened up the whole portrait and lifted all the values to make it a bit brighter because, as we know, it's way too dark at the moment. The texture that I created was so harsh. The fix that I decided to do was I decided to sort of select the different areas of skin and actually try and physically blur it out a bit using the sort of Gaussian blur effect, if that's how it's pronounced. And I tried to soften the skin out just to make it look a little less sharp and weird. And I think that helped a lot. It's definitely not perfect, but it definitely helped to fix the issue so it wasn't so in your face. So I've finished this portrait. We've got a lot to figure out and fix before I tackle a color portrait. I am definitely nowhere near ready for that yet. Let's learn a bit more and figure out how to fix these big issues that I'm having, especially with brushes.
I learned so much from watching all of those videos and the main thing that I've learned is that I shouldn't be using that soft round brush. Apparently you should especially not use the soft brush when you're trying to lay in your initial colours because it's really hard to create structure that way and I can definitely see why I was having problems with that myself. There's this thing called flow that I didn't know about. Apparently what it does is it just makes it easier to go from that light to dark tone and give a more blended look. So I'm not going to change the opacity of the colour at all. I'm going to leave it on 100% because I did struggle with working with the lower opacity because I found that when I did multiple strokes on top of each other you could kind of see through all the strokes and see them all layered and it kind of gave a messy look to my sort of paintings I found. So I'm hoping this will fix that. But I think now I'm ready to dive into colour a bit. I'm going to test out the new things that I've learnt by doing a colour study of an eye. This is what I'm going to be using as reference. I wanted to draw something that has a little more texture, a little more detail, and I want to try and make it a lot less smooth. I'm sticking with a hard round brush. I've got it on 100% opacity, and so I'm just going to start off by blocking in some of these shadows, and I'm keeping my brush as big as I can sort of keep it so that I'm just working from big shapes down to the smaller details. I think just using this type of brush as well is just going to help it to have a much more painterly style, look a little bit more interesting and actually have more of a style to it rather than just looking like this blurry mess. See this is a whole other challenge because now I'm using colour and so I've got all of these different things that I've got to try and work with and balance and I'm not really sure what the best way to tackle doing this type of study is. And hopefully by the end of it, I'll get a little bit more understanding of how I like to do things and what seems to work and what doesn't. Okay, I did switch over to the hard round but with the pressure opacity as well as the flow and personally I just prefer this at the moment. I feel a bit more confident with it and I'm getting the results I want a little bit easier with that. I just need more practice. So I'm just gonna finish up doing this sort of technique to get in this base layer and then once I've done that I'll work on a new layer and start to get in some of the details. I was a little bit naughty when I did this sketch because as you can see I haven't started with any guidelines I'm just sort of going in and drawing in all of the facial features which I don't normally recommend doing I always like to go in and sort of add some structure to the face first before you start placing eyes or noses or anything like that once I sort of created that rough sketch I went in and I just sort of refined it cleaned up those lines and added a nice base color to the canvas to work off of this sort of light peachy brown tone and just seeing that made me really excited to do this portrait. I started by blocking in the light and dark tones for the skin, just sort of place in all of those main colours and I did struggle at the start to know how big my brush should be so I was sort of testing the brush and then undoing it and then making it a bit bigger or smaller and then trying that again. There's a lot of trial and error. And I was using that low flow setting and already I was starting to see that I could get those different tones in the skin without getting that really airbrushed look to the painting. And with any sort of medium that you're using, whether that's paints or pencils, I always recommend sort of looking at bigger shapes and then going down to the details rather than focusing on the details right away. And I think digital painting is a great way to sort of break down that process because you can do it on layers. So I'm doing all of these base colors, sort of blocking in all of these simple, bigger shapes of color using this layer. And then I can do another layer and add details. And so that's really convenient and helps to break down the paint painting process into simpler steps. 
And at this point, I really wanted to refine the skin and add a bit more structure. So I turned off that sketch layer so that I could really clearly see what I was working with. And I went in, added some smaller highlights and shadows and just sort of tweaked the skin until I got it how I wanted it. And at the moment, she's looking super weird. So it's time to give her some eyes. Her eyes are such a pretty color. I really loved her blue eyes. It's one of the things that drew me to this reference. And again, I started off by just sort of blocking in where the darker blues were and the grays for the white of the eye. I made sure not to make the white of the eye too bright. So I kept it sort of darker with the gray tones. And I just added little highlights here and there where they actually were on the white of the eye. And my favorite part is definitely adding in all of the details and also adding the eyelashes. This is my favorite part. It just brings the eyes to life. And I was really happy with how realistic this portrait was looking. Considering this is my first in-color portrait, I couldn't have been happier with how this was turning out right now. But since I picked this reference, there was one part that I was so excited to do, and that was her skin texture. I wanted to use the small round brush to create some of the more prominent freckles. And then I wanted to go in with like a splatter brush and just sort of create that freckle texture and layer lots of those brush strokes to create that freckling. And then I just went in and I painted in the little bit of hair that you can see in the reference. And I really wanted to focus on creating those wispy bits of hair under her hat because it's details like this which are really going to make your painting look super realistic. But then I added a few more shadows and details and it's time to reveal the final painting. I love doing this portrait and challenging myself to try something new. It's always fun to push your skills and your limits to see what you're capable of. I did a video recently where I drew a full color pencil portrait with only the primary colors. So check out that video next and I'll see you in that one. Bye everybody.